Hey guys, welcome back to the Jeep Solid Garage. Uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing as I do all kinds of Jeep repairs. Currently I'm working on a Project 92 YJ. This is a complete restoration I'm working on, so hit that subscribe button. So today we're gonna be working on the engine a little bit more. That uh, crankshaft there just lifts right out. Uh, I just have it setting there for storage right now. But we are gonna uh, hone the cylinders, start taking freeze plugs out, get this uh, engine all cleaned up and uh, ready for reassembly. Working in the shop here. Gonna do some uh, cylinder honing here. I've got the playoffs on, hanging out in the shop. It's a good day. Let me get this crank out of the way. I gotta lift this out. And we'll just put the crank on the driver's seat. That'll work, right? Doesn't everybody keep their crank on their driver's seat? Oh, what's that? A little sneak peek. Whoa, what's that? Whoa. So if you haven't seen my buddy Jason, his channel, Bronco Solid, be sure to go check that out. He's working on a rebuild here. Uh, and then just a little sneak peek there. I'll be sure to link his channel below. All right, let's uh, flip this over so we can hone these cylinders. I. Uh, I got a cylinder honing tool from uh, AutoZone, a free rental. You know, you rent the tool. When you're done with it, bring it back to them. Now, because we're doing... Oh, because we're doing new uh, pistons and rings, we have to hone the cylinder. Uh, these cylinders, they get a glaze on them. Uh, just a real shiny look to them. To get the new rings on the pistons to seat properly in the cylinders, you have to hone them and get off that, and take off that real smooth glaze. So that's what our cylinder honing tool is gonna do. At least I hope to get all the uh, honing done on this today, and then we'll dig into cleaning up the uh, block here more, getting those freeze plugs out. But uh, let's just see how far we can get here. Now before I get too far into this, I just wanna protect his Jeep a little bit here, because. I just don't want to be responsible for uh, slinging any bits of oil onto his new paint job. Ah! So as I mentioned, we're going to be using new pistons and rings. Well, the new rings on the pistons here, uh, for them to seat properly in the cylinder, it has to cut their own uh, seat. So we have to get rid of that shiny glaze. Spray it down with some WD-40. That's going to be the lubricant we use for the honing. And we've got this three-leg honing tool. I'm just gonna put this on time-lapse. You guys can watch me do this real quick. It's a fairly easy process, and we're looking for a nice cross-hatch uh, pattern when we're done. So that's the difference we're going for. Nicely honed cylinder, one with a ton of glaze on it. So let's uh, continue on with cylinder number two here. So that's kind of what we're doing, just repeating that process. Every once in a while, taking a rag and wiping out the cylinder here, getting all the little dirt and gunk. You can see all that uh, gray gunk coming out and that's uh, just some of the glaze and a little bit of the stone, a little bit of dirt, just all that coming off onto our rag here. We take our stones here and just rinse it in some water there. These can kind of build up a little bit of glaze on them as well. You can take a little uh, brush and Scrape them off if there's actual glaze built up on them. These look okay right now. Kind of dry them off a little bit. Just pat them dry. And then you don't want to do this dry, so take a little WD-40 on our stones. And a little WD-40 in the cylinder. 
compress it. And you want to go kind of a low speed in and out. You want to create that nice uh, cross hatch pattern for the uh, valves, not valves, these are pistons that we'll be putting in for the uh, piston rings to create a seat. So, and you don't want to go in too far. You want to kind of like know where you need to stop so you don't run the stones into the bottom and hit the bearings on the bottom, the bearing caps on the bottom. And then you don't want to come out all the way so that the tool springs open, pops out and springs open. You can actually damage the tool and break the stones if you pull it out and let it spring open like that. So what you do is, as you're going in and out, when you stop and ready to come out, then you just stop and compress it and pull it out. So that's the basic process. The less, the faster your drill is going, the less crosshatch pattern you'll have and they'll be all going the same direction. And the faster you go in and out, the more it's gonna drag those up and down. This is all confusing. I'll, I'll just cut this part. All right, so I made a little bit of a mistake. When I was at the auto parts store, I rented my cylinder honing tool and I did not take a good look at it when I picked it up. And the stones on this, look at that. The stones on it are all cracked and worn and it's just in rough shape. These stones need to be replaced. And I'm just a little bit worried that when I take this back to them, they're gonna blame me for breaking those stones where they were broken before I even touched it, before I even used it, so. I did have my friend Jason like witness like, hey, look at this. These stones are broken already and I have honed nothing. So, but I went ahead and used it for a little while. And finally I was like, uh, I just need to take it back and go get another one. So I got a new one and here's my new one. And it looks just in much better shape. The stones on it aren't all cracked and broken and needing to be replaced. Just looks much better. So lesson learned when you're doing the tool rental program from one of these auto parts store, be sure to look at the product you're picking up before you leave the store to make sure it's in good condition. I'll let you guys know if they end up trying to charge me for this. I doubt it because I do a lot of business at these auto parts store and I hope they value me as a customer in my opinion and that they trust that I didn't break this. So let's get back at it. We got our honing done. It looks really good. Turned out well. So that'll be a good seat for our new piston rings. So now let's move on to punching these freeze plugs out and oil plugs and then getting it ready to clean up. Let's put one last coat of WD-40 on these guys, prevent rust. Don't want my freshly honed cylinders to rust here. And see all that dirt? We're gonna be taking care of that as well. <clears throat> we gotta get these things perfectly clean. See, this rag should come out spotless. But we'll do that when we give this thing a bath. Hey guys, so I gotta make an executive decision and I gotta call it quits here. I did get farther into the engine than just the honing. Obviously it's off the engine stand. I got some of the freeze plugs out, the oil plugs, taking it off the engine stand. That was kind of a fun process. I'll have that in the next video, but I still have to edit this video that you're watching right now. I just, I got a lot to do. Pumping out a video every week, it takes a lot of work, a lot of time. So this project's taken me three times longer than I would expect because of recording and editing, all of that. It just takes a lot of time. So. Anyways, I'm going to call this video ending right here and be sure to tune in next week where we'll, we will go over the freeze plugs, the oil plugs, these things, the little oil plugs, they were a booger to get out. So, and taking off the engine stand, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Took it off the engine stand by myself. So anyways, be sure to tune in next week so you can follow along with the rebuild. 
let's watch that epic uh, hat toss one more time. How about that? Thanks for watching. Have a good day.